Hello, hello, hello. My name is Tim Cleaver, broadcasting live from twitch.tv slash Tim Cleaver. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my first episode of my first Elden Ring playthrough, but not really. So what happened was, in classic Tim Cleaver fashion, I bit off more than I could chew. I thought that I could do two separate first playthroughs, one specifically for YouTube and one on Twitch, and then uploading that to YouTube as well. But it kind of ruins the surprise of like certain areas and bosses. Like it, it's hard to to act surprised when you know what's coming. Uh, so yes, I want this to be like my my first playthrough. Even though I've made it to uh, the first uh, mandatory boss, Margit. I beat Margit. Uh, so I did a I did some exploring as well. Uh, but I deleted those characters. So I'm just going to stream on Twitch, upload it to YouTube, and that's it. Uh, yeah. And I messed around with another character as well. And I realized I, I may have picked the wrong starting class. Because there's a starting class that starts with like a halberd and a longsword and a 100% block shield. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go for that. Yeah, it's the Vagabond. Name. And the music just stops, okay. Uh, body type A, age, mature. Age only affects appearance, has no bearing on ability. Yeah, so I'll, I'll still be playing it like it's my first time, even though I haven't beaten it yet, so it kind of is my first time. Uh... But yeah, I'll be reading all the item descriptions and and taking my time as usual and trying to piece together the, the lore. Uh, keepsake. No keepsake. The past has been well and truly left behind. Crimson Amber Medallion. A medallion inlaid with Crimson Amber increases maximum HP. Lands Between Rune. The gold of grace shining in the eyes of the people of the Lands Between. Used to gain many runes. I think it's like 3,000 runes. Golden Seed. A golden seed washed ashore from the lands between. Said to reinforce sacred flasks. Not an Estus flask, a sacred flask. Banged Imp Ashes. The ashes of small, diminutive golems. Ashes are said to hold spirits within. Cracked Pot. Three strange cracked pots that somehow mend themselves. A container for certain thrown items. Stone Sword Key. Two stone keys shaped like swords. Breaks the seal on imp statues, but can only be used once. Bewitching branch. Five sacred branches charged with beguiling power. Said to originate from the demigod Mequela. Boiled prawn. Five pieces of boiled prawn boosts physical damage negation. And Shabriri's woe. The crazed likeness of a noble whose eyes have been gouged out. Attracts enemies' aggression. Uh, so yeah, for my, f I I originally chose Stone Sword Key, I think, yeah. But I think I'll go for Lands Between Rune. That's gonna allow us to get a few extra early levels, and it'll be a little bit of a boost. Choose Base Template. Warrior, the most common face among the tarnished. After all, they were all warriors once. Truth Seeker, the face of an Astur pilgrim. There are many roads to truth. Aristocrat, a regal face found among those who claim noble blood in the lands between. Loner, face found among a proud and seclusive tribe of folk, well versed in ancient legends and heresies alike. Northerner, a face found among the hardy people of the unforgiving north. Some say they're descended from giants. Seafarer, the face of one who wanders the seas in search of their home in the lands between. Reedlander, a uh, face from the far away isolated land of reeds where blood is a familiar sight. Probably cutting their lips on like the reeds playing saxophone. Draconian. The stony face of the people of the ancient dragons among whom life is typically short. Nightfolk. The features of those known as nightfolk. Few in number, they were said to bleed silver long ago. And Newman. 
the face of the Newman supposed descendants of denizens of another world. Long lived, but seldom born. I think I'll go warrior. Try to keep it, like, simple for my first playthrough. Detailed appearance. Uh, I could, like, load my first character creation here. And just change that up a little bit. I want to change my beard. <laughs> That's what I hope for in a few months. Um... Is there a color option? Here we go. Let's try 60 green and... Less blue. Yeah, that looks kind of accurate. Um, eyes. Yeah, that's that's a good color, blue. Pretty accurate. All right, I think we're good to go. Yeah, so we start with a long sword, a halberd. And a heater shield, which is 100% physical block shield. That's amazing. And the first class that they're, uh, they've given us the option to choose, too. So it's like, it's like the knight's class from Dark Souls 3. It's a good all-around class. And yeah, we'll play for uh, three hours. Exactly three hours from now. Till three o'clock. And uh yeah, I'll I'll I intend for this to be like a jack of all trades build too. I just had a thought. I'll save it for after the cutscene. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. Badass. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long-lost grace speaks to us all. Or alone, 
chieftain of the Badlands. Hora Lowe. The ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion. The loathsome Dung Eater. Notice the uh, symbol of the sun on his chest. And Sir Gideon Othmir. They all know him. Is he the final boss? Gideon Ofnir. And one other whom Grace would again bless. Tweety Clan, hello. Long time no see. No renown. How are you? Cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Hell yeah. Okay, so my theory is. Uh, was it the first line in the intro? Something like the fallen leaves tell a story. So my theory is that the ring, the Elden Ring, is not a physical ring that you wear on your finger. It's the rings around a tree telling how old it is. Because isn't it like for every ring around a tree, it's another year of the tree's life? So it would make sense that the trees that are falling come from or the, the leaves that are falling from the tree coming from the Elden tree or the, the Ur tree, which I think maybe the Elden ring comes from. Yeah, so that's that's my thing. The Elden ring is not a ring on your finger. It's a tree with the rings around the tree trunk. Uh, a couple of days back from vacation. Nice, nice. Where did you go? Did I rebrand? I guess so. Yeah, I changed my name. Uh, from, well, first it was Beardo Cleaver, and then Beardo Nation, and then now it's my real name, Tim Cleaver. So I guess so, yeah, yeah. Let's take a screenshot right here. Okay, so we got mid-roll. Uh, let's take off some armor until I can. Fast roll. Equipment menu. With the equipment menu, you can equip armaments, arrows, bolts, armor, talismans, and items. You can equip up to three armaments, each to your left and right hands. The actions each armament performs will vary based on which hand is wielding it. Well, thank you. I just put it together in a uh, couple of seconds. You vacation in Colorado. Nice, nice. I visited there uh, back in high school for a school band trip like 20 years ago in uh, Denver. Beautiful state. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? You may call me... Uh, shit, what's that line again? There are some who call me... Tim? <laughs> Tarnished Wizened Finger. With the inventory menu, you can browse the items you're carrying, drop them on the ground, or throw them away. You can also use tools from the inventory menu. Uh, square is show large image and explanation. Triangle toggle character data. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I'm Enchanter. But some call me... Dim? That's a classic movie, man. So good. Item for online play can also be used from the messages menu. Used to write messages. Your messages will be conveyed to other worlds, allowing other players to read them. A finger of corpse wax, so emaciated the bone is visible. It is a relic of those who came before, left to help those who would come, come after. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice, Tweety. Four years of follow which Hell yeah, dude. Thank you. That's, uh... Like, 80% of the time that I've had this channel. Yeah, we missed our four-year anniversary. <laughs> well, consider this... The celebration? <laughs> so that's the Erd tree. I'm pretty sure that's the Erd tree. <laughs> I made that mistake too my first time playing this so yeah like I'll, I'll tell you guys when this is all new because I've, I've played this part before but yeah I'll certainly tell you guys when we're in a new area I haven't seen before. How does the uh, the audio sound too? I changed up some settings. Hopefully it sounds better. Like I said, I added some filters to my mic. Eh, yeah. Still haven't found the Sour Skittles, really. They may not just sell them where you are because... Uh, yeah, like, yeah, we were talking about that. That was a while ago. Yeah, they're, like, common here. <laughs> Grafted Scion. The Screech. Can we beat it first try? No, I guess not. They're extinct, yeah. Exactly. They're, uh... They're rare. They're only in, in a few certain parts of the world. Like, <laughs> the rare, uh, 7-Eleven. Well, we ain't looking too good. is on his side. We found him here, after all. Yeah, after all. If Fortune wasn't on our side, we'd be dead. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. Uh-oh, we're in violation of the Golden Order. So yeah, let's see if my theory holds true in any mention of, like, the Elden Ring. Let's assume that they're talking about a tree. And the rings of the tree, not a physical ring you wear on your finger or your toe. The maker of this game apologized for making it so hard? No, I didn't see that. That can't be a real thing. 
He shouldn't have to apologize. He people know. People should know what they're getting into. This is a fucking FromSoft game. FromSoft games aren't easy, and that's why I love them. Flask of Crimson Tears. Flask of Cerulean Tears. Yeah, Tweety, if you want to post that in my Discord, that'd be awesome. So I could check it out later. Okay, let's move some stuff around. Okay, we got some more stuff to read, too. Uh, Longsword. A straight sword with a double-edged blade. In addition to its reliable standard damage, this weapon also boasts powerful piercing attacks. A superbly balanced armament. Skill square off. The skill starts with the sword held level. Follow up with a normal attack to slash upwards through the enemy's guard, or a strong attack to perform a running thrust. And Halberd. A long-handled polearm that combines the functions, functions of both axe and spear. Can be used to press a single enemy with continuous... Uh, thrusting attacks or swept at groups, taking advantage of its great reach and cleaving blade. A versatile weapon for any situation. Skill, charge forth. Quickly charge forward with the armaments at the hip, carrying the momentum into a thrust. Hold to cover a great greater distance. I think I think we'll have to utilize the uh, the halberd more than the longsword. Heater shield. A medium-sized metal shield, comparatively easy to handle. Metal shields reliably negate physical damage when guarding, a trait which made them highly trusted on the battlefield. Skill, parry. Use the skill in time with the foe's melee attack to deflect it and break that foe's stance. This provides an opening to perform a critical hit. And some armor we got. A Vagabond Knight Helm. Helm of a knight banished from their motherland. Dirty and battered after enduring a lengthy vagabond journey. The visor is broken and can no longer be lowered. Hmm. Metal armor is heavy, but also sturdy, offering significant damage negation. Uh, chest piece of a knight banished from the motherland. The crest embl emblazoned on the front is worn and dingy, no longer able to evoke sentiment. Hmm. So that implies when it was uh, fresh and new, it, it did evoke sentiment. Hmm. Uh, Vagabond Knight Gauntlets. Same description. And Vagabond Knight Greaves. Same description. Hell yeah, hell yeah, Tweety. A uh, Flask of Crimson Tears. A sacred flask modeled after a golden holy chalice that was once graced by a tear of blessing. Filled with crimson tears, this flask restores HP with use. Rest at a site of grace to replenish. The one washed up on the gravesite was sure to die until this flask offered its gift of rejuvenation. Seek the Elden Ring. A flask of Cerulean Tears. Sacred flask modeled after a golden holy chalice that was once graced by tear of blessing. Excuse me. Filled with cerulean tears, this flask restores FP with use. Uh, rest of the description is the same. Yeah, so crimson is red, cerulean is blue. Lands between rune. This is our starting keepsake. Grace said to have once dwelled in the eyes of the inhabitants of the lands between. The lingering residue of gold. Used to gain many runes, and runes are the XP, the souls. Uh, no grace resides in the eyes of the tarnished. If it ever did, it is now lost. And it looks like an eye of sort. Uh, we got one more thing I saw. Yeah, this thing. Memory of grace. The memory of, of first grace, which once guided bygone tarnished to the lands between. Lose all runes and return to last site of grace visited. It is merely a cycle. Stand before the Elden Ring. Become the Elden Lord. Another cycle. So it's like... It could take place in the same universe as Dark Souls. Uh, but just when the, the, the world of Dark Souls has... Has come to an end. And now it's a new... A new... Uh, 
timeline, a new universe, a new... Yeah, a new, a, a new world, basically. Using items. Square, use item, and down, switch item. Oh yeah, let's get that helmet off. So I think I'll be using the longsword. It does 145 damage at its base. Whereas what the longsword does 125, so 20 more. And I bet we can fast roll now if we put the helmet back on. Nope, not yet. Sights of Grace. Resting at a site of grace will restore your uh, HP, FP, and cleanse any status ailments. It will also refill your sacred flasks. However, most of the enemies you've defeated will be revived. You can find, find sites of grace by going where light converges. These explanations are required in the form of info items and can be accessed from the inventory at any time. So I like how the game kind of still... They they video game it up a little bit by adding tutorial messages, but it's still like Dark Souls at its core. So basically they've made everything a bit more easier and accessible except the combat itself, which is still challenging and and unforgiving. But yeah, the Sights of Grace, aka the bonfires, are closer together. Um, you could refill your flasks more frequently now. Ooh. Okay, cool. Thank you, Tweety. I'll check it out after the stream. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'd like to see that. Like, yeah, sorry, you made the game too hard. But I, I, I hope they never change. Never change from soft, never change. Guarding. Use an armament in your left hand or both hands to guard against incoming attacks. Guarding is especially effective when done with a shield. Especially 100% block shield. Guarding consumes stamina. If your stamina runs out, your stance will be broken. Dodging. You can avoid enemy attacks with a dodge roll or back step. Both of these actions consume stamina. Left stick and circle, dodge, roll, circle, back step. Classic Dark Souls. X to jump. Hold left stick, circle, dash. Run. Materials. In every corner of the lands between, you will find fruits and flowers, mushrooms and butterflies, and various other useful materials. These materials can be used for item crafting. And a row of fruit. Let's read up on this. Very like out. Maybe once we're in the clear here. Wielding armaments. Each hand can be equipped with up to three armaments, allowing you to toggle between them. Armaments can also be two-handed, making attacks more difficult to repel with shields and boosting effective strength by 50%. So right D-pad, switch right-hand armament. Left D-pad, switch left-hand armament. Triangle and L1 or R1 wield with two hands. So yeah, if we want to two-hand what's in our right hand, we go triangle R1. If we want to uh, two-hand what's in our left hand, triangle and L1. Okay, let's check out that uh, row of fruit. Berry-like red fruits that grow in shrubs. Shrubbery! Material used for crafting items. Easily found anywhere, everywhere in the lands between. It has a wide variety of uses. Cool. I also posted a selfie in the selfie section so you can appreciate how nice your new haircut is. Nice. Did you get a mohawk? Or a mullet? <laughs> R 
Right stick while locked onto target. Change target. <laughs> no Mohawk. <laughs> it's all good. I had a Mohawk once when I was like 25 or so. Skills. Armaments have special abilities called skills. Skills are highly varied and range from powerful attacks to temporarily temporary effects. Using skills consumes FP. L2 is skill. Skill. Oh yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah, I'll check after the stream. Crouching. Crouch to make it harder for enemies to discover you. And this is a new thing too. Especially effective in tall grass. Attacking an enemy that hasn't noticed you will cause more damage than usual. L3 to crouch and stand up. I love how they added grass to like it's like they obviously added it added it here just to train us how to backstab and sneak properly. Sneaky sneak. Stance breaking. Some attacks may break an enemy's stance, giving you a chance to perform a critical hit. Charge attacks and jump attacks make it particularly easy to break an enemy's stance. Hold R2, charge attack, and R2 while jumping, jump attack. Okay, so yeah, it's much easier to jump and attack that way. Oh, that broke the guard too, sweet. Stakes of America. Upon dying, you will be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. However, if there is a stake of America near where you died, you can choose to be revived there instead. So yeah, that's another thing that the game added, or the developers added, uh, to make it a bit more accessible and easier. So yeah, you don't have to like uh, backtrack like five minutes to get to a boss again. Guard counters. You can perform a counterattack immediately after blocking an enemy attack. Guard counters make it easy to break an enemy stance. R2 immediately after blocking an attack. Guard counter. Easy. It's like... It's like a poor man's parry. There is some timing involved, but uh, not a lot. Or uh, not... It's not as, like, precise as... As a parry and repost. And a new gesture. Strength! Okay, let's switch off this one. Strength. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think we can go through here now. We'll have to come back here later once we get a certain item. You stone sword key? Yes. No. Oh shit! My pocket's empty. No stone sword key in inventory. Okay. Yeah, we have to come back here. Cooperative multiplayer. Use tarnished furled finger to write a gold summon sign. Cooperative multiplayer will begin once you have been summoned by a player from another world. You will take the role of an ally, for old finger, and your objective is to defeat the area boss. The compass at the top of the screen indicates the direction of the summoner, host of fingers. We've got a finger severer. 
and tarnished furled finger. Uh, I think we just read this, read this, right? Except the finger of corpse wax furled like a hook. It is a relic of those who came before, left to those, left to help those who would come after. Uh, item for online play, and finger severer. Use as a host of fingers to select a summoned player and send them back to their world. It's like, get out of here. Use when you have been summoned to another player's world to return to your own world. This phantom blade severs the link formed by a furled finger. But the maidens scorn those who abuse its use. Yeah, so don't use it uh, willy-nilly. Don't use it haphazard haphazardly. Am I wearing eyeshadow or uh, what's like eye eyeliner? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, let's get out here. Limgrave. It's almost like uh, getting out of the sewers in Oblivion for the first time. Guidance of Grace. Grace exists to guide the Tarnish and lead them along the proper path. Even now, some sites of grace retain that power. Their golden rays will guide you along your way. Yeah, so we always have like these golden rays guiding us to our uh, mission objective, like our main quest objective. So it's impossible to kind of get lost, which is a huge quality of life change, making it easier. But, but I think that kind of removes some of the fun and magic about the game. Uh, well, let's see how it works, because I, I like I said, I haven't beaten the game yet. Yeah, I, I just keep comparing it to Dark Souls, where like you have to figure out everything for yourself. So this game is a bit more uh, transparent that way. Like, it explains some things a bit more. The map! And there's a map and a compass. Use your map to check your current position, as well as the terrain and surrounding structures. You can update your map with new information by finding map fragments at Stelles, Stelles? Uh, along the road. You can also use the map to freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Map menu. With the map menu, you can check your current position and terrain and buildings in the surrounding area. You can also freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Lastly, through your map, you can uh, you can select any sites of grace that you've discovered and travel there instantaneously. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. Hello. Oh yes, tarnished. Yes. Woman. Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring. Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. How do we get an invitation? Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me, Vare. How convenient. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? Yeah, I've got a little grace. Also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow 
Even if it leads you to your grave. It's meant to be, it's meant to be. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly. To Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff. The home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Grafted. Yeah, so I haven't made it there yet, Godric the Grafted. I have made it to the castle. Uh, maybe a little bit in, but I haven't made it to Godric at all. It's time you set off, I should think. To Castle Stormvale on the cliff, where Grace would guide you. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. It's time you set off, I should think. To Castle Stormvale. And this is just like one small part of the map. Summoning pools. In each area, you may find effigies of martyrs. These effigies are summoning pools. You'll find it easy to summon other players at these locations as co-op and hostile summoning signs created with small effigies gather at summoning pools. A small golden effigy. Item for online play can also be used from the multiplayer menu. Send a cooperative summon sign to several nearby summoning pools, activated pools only. In cooperative multiplayer, your objective will be to defeat the area boss of the world to which you were summoned. Hello, big boy on horse. Tree Sentinel, yeah, we're not going to fight that guy yet. But I think it'll be easier with uh, a longer weapon. No oh, shit! Church of LA. You desecrate my church! Oh, fuck you! <laughs> Let me rest here, bro. Ow! Oh, cut! Up. Dang. And yeah, we could go pretty much like the whole game without beating that boss, I think. But I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's get those uh, echoes back or fucking runes. Upon dying, you will be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. You will drop any runes in your possession at the site of your death. If you die again before reclaiming those runes, you, they will be lost forever. The compass at the top of the screen indicates the direction of the lost runes. I think we'll have to sneak by this guy. Ruin Fragment. Stone Fragment found near places where runes have fallen from the sky. To be used for crafting or simply for throwing at enemies. These shards of stone are believed to have once been part of a temple in the sky. They glow with a faint light from within. Temple in the sky, like a giant tree, maybe? A tree house? A tree fort? Okay, we got our uh, runes back. Fast travel to Sites of Grace. Through your map, you can instantly travel to any Sites of Grace that you visited or discovered. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. 
so, so right off the bat, we can fast travel already. Strengthening armaments. At a smithing table, you can spend runes and smithing stones to strengthen your armaments. Somewhere in the lands between, you may meet a blacksmith who can make your armaments even stronger. The smithing stone, rank one. Stone used to smith a variety of armaments. A shard found in plenty. Strengthens armaments up to plus three. Smithing stone is found throughout the lands between, and mining galleries built to excavate it can be found everywhere. Very cool. I thought I saw something out here, too. Yeah, this thing. Golden Root. Grace that dwells within the inhabitants of the lands between. The lingering trace of gold. Used to gain a small number of runes. Uh, runes are nourishment for the development of any tarnished. Provided a finger maiden can be found. That's the one we got as a keepsake. Alright, let's talk to Santa. Santa Claus? You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I think I will. I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. About Kale. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say as a tree would dry up. Customer. Okay, what can I buy? Shop menu. With a shop menu, you can spend runes to purchase various items. You can also sell items for runes. Each merchant stocks a different variety of items for purchase. Okay, we have 595. Uh, let's buy these, first of all. Oh no, maybe let's buy this crafting kit. And torch. Nice to do business. Yes. Item crafting. Uh, if you have a crafting kit, which we do because we just bought it, you can make various items for from materials that you find. Select item crafting from the main menu to make items. You can learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. Containers. You will need cracked pots or other containers to craft certain items. You will not be able to make more of those items than you have containers. Container items will run out with use, but the containers themselves will remain. Okay. Uh, let's use these items that we got. Let's read up on... Crafting kit. A uh, leather bag containing a pestle and mortar, small blade, and various other tools. Enables item crafting from the main menu. Provides both means to fight and means to survive. Torch. This torch's tip is wrapped in oil-soaked rags and set on fire. The flame can illuminate dark locales or be used to attack enemies. Can be raised up when equipped in the left hand, illuminating more of the surrounding area. Skill, torch attack, thrust, th torch forward, thrust, torch forward, and set, to set foes ablaze. <laughs> thrust, torch forward, to set foes ablaze. This skill is especially effective against foes who are weak to fire. What is it? Still going to purchase something? Yes. Okay, let's buy... Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 1. Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 2. Uh, Missionaries Cookbook 1. Notes Flask of Wondrous Physic. 
Notes, waypoints, ruins. And we could buy three of these crack pots. Beautiful. Goodbye. Nice to do business. Yes. Excellent use of those early runes. Okay, crack pot. This empty pot somehow mends itself when broken. Essential vessel for crafting cracked pot items. The materials and magic sealed magics sealed within deploy their effects when the pot is thrown. So yeah, we use this to make like Molotovs and such, and then uh, we can only make how many we have cracked pots. So we only have three right now, but I'm sure we could upgrade that later. Crafting kit. We read that. Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 1, a record of crafting techniques left by roaming nomad warriors, contains knowledge for surviving in the face of utter scarcity. Acquire the knowledge to craft the following. Bone arrow, bone arrow fletched, bone bolt. That's the second one. Uh, acquire the knowledge to craft the following. Glowstone, invigorating cured meat, invigorating white cured meat. And Missionary's Cookbook 1. Uh, a record of crafting techniques left by a man who, unable to become a finger maiden, instead became a missionary and went forth to spread holy teachings. Acquire the knowledge to craft the following. Holy water pot and roped holy water pot. Uh, we got something else, didn't we? Yeah, these things. Note, flask of wondrous physic. Note sold by a nomadic merchant imparting knowledge in brief. A flask of wondrous physic still remains in the third church of America, north of the Mistwood. Cross the highway bridge and follow the animal trail north. And note waypoint ruins. Uh, someone lurks among the waypoint ruins on the roads through the little grave. Someone. Alright. Off to a good start. Let's keep going. Erdly Flower. A dusky yellow flower that has started to fade to brown, bound throughout the lands between. Maturely used for crafting items, said to be fed by leaves that fell from the Erd tree in days of antiquity. Yeah, so they grow on the ground, but they're fed uh, by the leaves that fell from the Erd tree. Let's take this path here where nothing can go wrong. Oh yeah, having that 100% block shield is a game changer. Another smithing stone, nice. Kukri. Kukri. A large knife used for throwing. Its, its curved blade is sharp enough to slice flesh cleanly. Throw at enemies to inflict damage and build up onset of blood loss. This heavy throwing weapon is unsuitable for swift attacks, but is able to inflict heavy damage. Sweet. So we got our first uh, range of attack right there. Just a quick detour while I pick some flowers and then I stab you in the back. Dead soldier. Root resin. Resin secreted from the roots of the great tree. It also be found near trees on the surface, materially used for crafting items. The roots of the great tree were once linked to those of the Erd tree, or so they say. And it is for this reason catacombs are built around great tree roots.
by the side of Grace. Yeah, they're so much more frequent in this game. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Greetings. Greetings. Traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. I'd like to know what happened to her eye. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? Yes. They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden. Sure. Turning runes into strength. Sounds good to me. To aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you. To the foot of the Erd Tree. Sure. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace. To turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. An Elden Ring Spectral Steed Whistle. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a Spectral Steed named Torrent. Sick. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. Okay, we can level up now. Shall I turn your runes to strength? Let ah, turn them into endurance for now. Stamina. For but a moment. Share them with me. Uh level up menu. With the level up menu, you can spend runes to increase your attributes. The principles you would follow. With each attribute increase, your level rises by one. As your level rises, so does the amount of runes required for your next attribute increase. Okay, we need 411 more. Uh, flasks. Yeah, let's allocate flask charges. Uh, with this menu, you can allocate the number of uses in each of your flasks. You have a set total of maximum flask uses. You can decide how many of those uses are for the HP repl replenishing flask of Crimson Tears, or how many are for the FP repli uh, refl I can't speak replenishing flask of Strulian tears. Let's go four and zero. Yes. Yes. Cool. Horseback riding. Use the spectral steed whistle to summon and ride your spectral steed. If your spectral steed dies, you can summon it again, but it will cost one flask of crimson tears to do so. You can dismount by using the whistle again or by pressing L3. Pouches! What is this, reading simulator? From pouch in the main menu, you can equip six items through your pouches. Four of those items can be used without opening the main menu. So triangle and up, right, left, or down. Okay. Uh, let's put Torrent down here. Spectral Steed Whistle. Here it is. All right. Uh, let's actually upgrade my halberd to plus one right now because we can do that.
Godric Soldier Greaves. Greaves worn by soldiers loyal to Godric the Grafted, rest worn and stained through unending conflict. Yeah, I guess we could farm those uh, enemies too for Godric's Godric soldier set. With the smithing menu, you can spend runes and smithing stones to strengthen your armaments. You can strengthen your armaments up to plus three at a smithing table. Somewhere in the lands between, you may meet the blacksmith who can make your armaments even stronger. Here's hoping. Halberd plus one. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah, let's uh let's try Tree Sentinel on and off. I just want to see how how well we do. I'm already doing more damage than my earlier uh, battle axe. Shit. Oh no, you're kidding me. Yeah, I'm doing better than earlier. Lady Gandalf. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. Yes. I am the witch, Rena. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. She's got four hands. And upon four looking arms. into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou Do you have four legs, too? The power, no? Two to legs. call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. I can call the spectral steed. Yes, I can. Ah. As I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Spirit calling bell. Lone wolf ashes. It is a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine. To do with as thou wishest. Summoning spirits. With a spirit calling bell, you can use ashes to summon various spirits. Summoning typically consumes FP. You can only summon one type of spirit at a time. You cannot summon spirits during multiplayer. Okay. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell. Used to summon the spirits of three lone wolves. This is the lone wolf ashes. Spirits of wolves chased from their pack. They later encountered a nameless tarnished who welcomed them as hunting companions. The wolf spirits overwhelm enemies with their agility, aiding the summoner in combat. All right. Forgive mine intrusion, tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? 
Oh, goodbye. Okay, let's uh put that here. Is that you hanging on the the cross type thing? I think I'm just going to time my attacks a bit better. I think I'm getting the, the hang of it. More or less. <laughs> oh, there's a skull there. You get it? I think you got it. Golden rune. Sweet. We did. We did. Yeah, I got to press attack like a bit before we get to the enemy. Because there's some... Delay. Their defeat was merely delay. Ah! Excuse me. Oh man. Okay, we had the right idea for the first couple of tries. Let's try it again. And I hear we can upgrade the uh, spirit summons too, so maybe we should do that, and that that would certainly make it easier because then the the spirits would stay alive for longer, allowing them to to uh, distract the boss for longer. Shit! Yep. Come on, bro. Okay, yeah, we'll come back here. We will come back for this. All right, let's check out the... Uh the Wayside Runes, I think it's called. Gatefront Runes, okay.
Gatefront Ruins. Oh yeah, I wanted to change the uh, camera speed. Let's try this. Oh yeah, that's, that's better. Much better. Weapon consisting of a bludgeoning head attached to a handle by a chain. The iron ball is spiked and induces blood loss. Blows from this weapon cannot be parried. The charge attack whirls the iron ball around for increased force before striking. Skill, spinning chain. Spins the striking part of a flail at high speed to attack. Follow up with a normal or strong attack to link the momentum of the skill into a successive attack. There's something here, too. Lord Sworn's Great Sword. It's 16 strength. Well crafted straight sword with an illustrious design wielded by regulars of a Lord's army. Though blackened and damaged by years of use, it appears to have otherwise been kept in a serviceable condition, despite the soldiers having long lost since long since lost their minds. Skill, stamp, upward cut. Brace armament and step into a low stance that prevents recoil from most enemy attacks. Follow up with a strong attack for an upward stroke. Okay, so yeah, we were able to to absorb enemy attacks and then follow up with a strong attack for an upward stroke. Cool. How much range does it have? It's like a claymore. That's awesome. Uh, what's the scaling? D and D. Just like that. Uh, it's got a bit more f base damage. Maybe I should have held on to those two smithing stones and upgraded this instead. Yeah, because that looks badass. Uh, no. So that's 161 damage and 161 damage. Okay, so it's like <laughs> comparable. No, I don't want to use that. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. I uh, didn't get much sleep last night. I went to bed at my usual time around 5 a.m. And I just woke up at like 9.30 or 9. 8.30 maybe. Even. Yeah, I woke up at like 8.30. And I couldn't fall back to sleep. Is that a Scully? Scully. Ruin Fragment? We got one of those already, didn't we?
Yeah, we got lots. And we have one more smithing stone, don't we? I thought I did. I thought I had another one. Okay. But I think I would like to use the uh, that Lord Sworn's greatsword. As soon as we can wield it. Just because it's a new thing. I don't want to, like, use old weapons from Dark Souls. Oh, they're coming. Oh, man. No, 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 no. Smithing stone. Nice. We can farm these guys for smithing stones. Oh, shit. Here come the big guy. Pokey. Nice. Godric Knight Gauntlets. Gauntlets worn by knights loyal to Godric the Grafted. Time has yet to dull their luster. Hmm. So they've been around for a long time, but yeah, time has not uh, failed to... What did it say? Tarnish their luster. Dull, their Lester. That's it. Oh, dude. Put that horn away. Vanquishing enemy groups. Vanquishing an enemy group will, will, uh, will replenish your flasks. Nice. The number and types of flasks to be replenished varies depending on the enemy group. You cannot replenish more flasks than your maximum am amount allows. No, I didn't think so. What's this? Map. Limgrave West. A new map has been found. Limgrave West. Right there. Very cool. Any more enemies?
We got five of these. That's a uh, thousand runes right there. That's a whole level. Nice. Adding skills. With a whetstone knife, you can use Ashes of War to grant your armaments new skills at Sites of Grace. An armament can only have one skill as the volume just stops again. So weird. Uh, an armament can only have one skill. Any skill it previously had will be removed. An armament type determines what skills it can have. Some special armaments have unique skills and cannot be granted new ones. Adding affinities. With a whetstone knife, you can use Ashes of War to grant affinities to your armaments at Sites of Grace. This way, you can alter an armament's attack affinity, boost attribute scaling, and more. An armament's type determines what affinities it can have. Some special armaments, like those with unique skills, cannot be granted new affinities. So yeah, we can add... Uh, we can change the scaling ourselves, basically. Uh, with, with the whetstone knife. Ash of War, Storm, Stomp, the Whetstone Knife. Oh, these are new too. Thin Beast Bones. Thin, hard Beast Bones. Materially used for crafting items. Bound by hunting beasts. Commonly used to make disposable weapons. Uh, Whetstone Knife. Whetstone with a cipher inscription. Made to look like a small knife blade. Allows the use of Ashes of War and a Sight of Grace to bestow new battle arts and affinities to armaments as, as skills. The battle arts and affinities will depend on the Ashes of War used. Ash of War, Storm Stomp. This Ash of War grants an armament the quality affinity and the following skill. Storm Stomp. One of the skills that channel the tempests of Storm Veil. Stomp hard on the ground to kick up a, mom a momentary storm. Usable on all melee armaments. Nice. Nice. Oh, this is awesome. These skulls are everywhere. Okay, I think we got everything around here. Um, I've got one smithing stone, right? Yeah, smithing yeah, smithing stone. Yeah, let's go this way. Okay, we needed, what, 16 strength for that Lord Sworn's Great Sword, right? So let's go. Oh, we have 13 decks already. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, more endurance would be nice. Just so I can fast roll with more armor on. It's got better critical damage, too. Yeah, I like this. I like this.
Fast roll? Nope, not yet. Uh, we can take that off. We're not using it. Oop. Ten thirty-eight. I think we could use some more runes to level up. Yeah. Um, let's go more Vigor. Oh yeah, having uh like having the proper gear, especially for a first time playthrough, uh makes a huge difference. Down he goes. Hey, hey, hey Storybook Gamer, hello buddy. How's it going, man? Long time of sea, man. How you been? Lord Swarm's Bolt. Well-crafted bolt with an illustrious design wielded by regulars of a lord's army. Deals more damage than its commonplace cousin. And I was hoping you'd drop in today. You, uh, you've got the day off, don't you, SPG? <laughs> yeah, this game's awesome. I'm loving it. Nice, nice. Well, hopefully everyone's doing well. Look at that big boy. Stormgate. Sweet. Yeah, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I went to bed at like 5 or 5.30. And I woke up at... Like 8.30. Just all of a sudden, I couldn't fall back to sleep. As much as I tried for like... An hour. So I figured might as well get up, make some breakfast, and stream. Bolt. Bolt. Mushroom. Yeah, man, it has been way too long. Um, I was gonna ask you what uh what games are you playing now? Any new games you're checking out? Cause you beat Days Gone recently, didn't you? Jesus. Okay, he's backing off. I think I may have uh, adjusted the camera too fast. So let's go... Sixth? Am I dead? No, I'm not dead. Where'd he go? There he is. Yeah, the camera speed starts really, really slow. How's it going, Egoger? I hope I say that right. Ego, Egoger? Yeah. 
Did I? I, I visited your stream a while ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, Egoger? Yeah, it's a bit faster than than default. I thought so. Yeah. How you how you doing, Egoger? Okay, we picked up some stuff that we gotta read. Uh, mushroom. A fungal growth that thrives in damp thickets and elsewhere. Material used for crafting items. And its thick, spongy flesh makes it a key component in throwing pots. Pots. And... Bolts, I think we got too. Bolts. Ammunition used for crossbows. A widespread, common type of bolt. But 50 hours in this game now. Wow. Right on. Yeah, so uh, this isn't my first playthrough. Like, I haven't beaten the game yet. But what I tried to do, uh, foolishly, I tried to have two separate first playthroughs. One uh, streamed live on Twitch as like a strength faith build, and then another completely simultaneous playthrough recorded separately for YouTube, which would be a dexterity intelligence build. But I realized that I've may, I may have bitten off more than I could chew. And uh, in, in classic me, it's a classic me thing when it comes to like streaming and, and, and YouTube videos. So I fucking deleted those save files, starting from scratch, kind of taking what I've learned uh, on a new character. So yeah, I, I didn't make it far. I made it a bit past uh, Margit. And I stopped a bit after that in the castle. So that's like as far as I've made it. We're debating uh, getting this or the new Pokemon game on Switch. Both look really good. Well, uh, if, if I know you, SPG, and I think I know you, I I if I were you, I would go for Pokemon because this this is a lot like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, and I know you're not really into those types of games, so I think I think you would enjoy Pokemon better than this. Even though this game is easier, what the fuck? It is a bit more uh, user friendly than Dark Souls. Uh, you streamed this for one or two streams and you decided that I just wanted to play offline once. Yeah. Archaeus? Archaeus? Dr. Archaeus? Who's that? Yeah, exactly. They're a nice little, nice little escape. Yeah, so I, for, I intend this to be like my, my new first playthrough. Uh, and I'll just like stream all of it but i probably will farm a bit off camera too if i have to farm or grind and stuff but so far so good yeah i picked a different starting class one with better starting gear so that makes a huge difference so much easier herb evergreen leaves that give off a faint light Materially used for crafting items. This very common medicinal plant can be found in thickets and elsewhere. Yeah, it, it's good to, to kind of have that escape, right? Yeah, this, this is pretty much like Dark Souls mixed with Skyrim. It's open world, but it's not sandbox. Uh, and yeah, it's a bit more user-friendly, like, it explains things a bit more, and it's a bit more forgiving when it comes to, like, figuring out where to go. Because, yeah, there's, uh, it's called a Path of Grace, and it's basically a light that guides you, uh, to your next, like, main story objective. So it's kind of impossible to get lost that way. We got a Smoldering Butterfly. Yeah, you can play as a samurai class too, yeah. So, it really is up to you. Like, if... 
if you think you would like it, maybe wait till it's on sale. Yeah, I guess it is a bit like Dark Souls Skyrim Breath of the Wild. I haven't played much Breath of the Wilds, but I could I could see some similarities from what I've seen. And a bit like Ninja Gaiden, uh, maybe a little bit. Like I know that game was kind of difficult, right? So yeah, basically the only thing that's similar to Dark Souls is the combat. Uh but they made everything else easier. Like you don't have to walk like five minutes from a checkpoint to the boss. Um, yeah, they have like new checkpoints that are closer to the boss. And uh, you can refill your flasks if you take out a bunch of enemies, like in a particular group. So yeah, it's, it's easier that way. Yeah, it might be a while before this game goes on sale though, but... Yeah, if you come over sometime soon, then, then you could try it out and decide. I love it, though. Like, you know me. I, I love these types of games. I do not regret this purchase one bit. I have played Dark Souls 3, yes. Yes. It's my third favorite from soft game, beside behind uh Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne. Golden Rune? Nice. Yeah, Dark Souls 1 is my one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima Legends. I think that's like an add-on to Ghost of Tsushima or I think it's uh, some multiplayer game based on Ghost of Tsushima. I'm not entirely sure. And I don't know if you need Ghost of Tsushima to play that. Yeah, in my head canon too. This is this is like Dark Souls 4. This is like everything that FromSoft has has been doing for the last 10 years and distilled into this amazing game. Exactly, exactly. They could have sold it as Dark Souls 4 and no one would have batted an eye. Lump of flesh. Let's read it before this big boy turns around. Lump of flesh. A lump of beast flesh filled with rich juices. Materially used for crafting items found by hunting carnivorous beasts. Meat suitable for a rustic feast. That sounds delicious. No, I don't think it's the base Ghost of Tsushima. I, I think it's just like DLC or something. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to do some research on that. Yeah, it's not, it's not a greatest hits. Yeah, it's like in the same world, but a different game. But, like I said, I'm not sure entirely. Uh, we didn't read this either. Smoldering Butterfly. An eternally burning butterfly found near wildfires and elsewhere. Material used for crafting items. Serves as the kindling for a number of items. Okay, we've got two tiers left. Oh, man. Big jumps. Yeah, so I've discovered that this uh, pathway here is an excellent source of runes. Because this guy drops like a thousand runes every time he dies. If we manage to kill it. It's a survival game, really. What kind of survival? Ow! Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa!
what? Okay, Mickey Mantle. I'll just take my shield and get out of here. Okay, enough of this. <laughs> oh, what? Dude. Oh, we're still good. I thought we had died. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Oh, oh, what? We're still good? We're still good. How are we still good? What's that? Golden seed. All right. Set of grace. Yeah, I most likely will like farm that pathway we just came from off camera for runes early on. Okay, we got a what a crimson or sacred tier? Golden seed. Increases sacred flasks number of uses. A golden seed found at the base of an illusory tree. Increases a sacred flask's number of uses. Can be used after resting at a site of grace. When the Elden Ring was shattered, these seeds flew from the Yerd tree, scattering across the various lands, as if life itself knew that its end had come. I think we could use that to uh, increase our charges or something. Flasks. I charge the flask. Cool, I had to charge the Flask of Crimson Tears. So now I think we have five. Yeah. One more. Stone Sword Key. Yeah, the snow is very deep. Yeah, hopefully it starts melting soon. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be wet though. Uh, a shore, a sword-shaped stone key breaks the seal on imp statues, but remains embedded in the statue after use, meaning it can only be used once as an item. Think well before using one. Yeah. Who's this? Storm Hill Shack. Everyone's been grafted. Everyone who came with me. They crossed the I think it is getting a bit forward. warmer outside too. For me. Like I noticed snow melting. Their arms taken. Their legs taken. Even their heads taken. Taken and stuck to the spider. Did you the know itsy bitsy spider? If you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid. It's quite a lark when you think about it. Sitting sideways. Yeah, exactly. Like if, because the snow's so deep, you don't know where the trail ends, and the river starts. So yeah, you gotta be, car be careful, buddy. Good. You went uphill instead. Good. 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 Yeah, don't don't go downhill by the river, or you'll end up in the river. Unfortunately, and I don't want that. You're all on your own, are you? And heading to Stormvale Castle. Yes. Enticed by the one in the white mask, I suppose. Oh, you've come to be one with the spider. Well, that makes us two peas in a pod. But I don't have your courage. It's scary, you know, having your arms cut off. Or legs, or your head. Yeah. I want to be like everyone else, but I'm just too scared. I'm nothing but a craven. So she wants to be like everyone else and have her limbs and head cut off, but she's too scared, rightly so. You had Neurosis Purify playing while you're walking through it. Nice, nice. Yeah, Neurosis is like 
awesome for for nature walks. That's on through silver and blood, right? Oh, I know. Can you take this little one along with you? Spirit jellyfish ashes. The poor thing deserves someone braver than myself. And the spirits look rather fondly upon you. It will be glad of your company, I think, the little one. Oh yeah, you gotta be careful, buddy. Yeah, if if those footprints are going to the river, then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, jellyfish ashes we got. Oh, can you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids in Stormvale Castle, tell them I love them. And that, despite my craven heart, I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon. Okay, I gotta look up one word. Craven. Getting the hang of this whole pain thing, you know? Her craven heart. Contentably lacking in courage, cowardly. So she's she's feeling remorse that she's lacking courage. Okay. So she's aware of it. Cool. And uh, I added a new channel point earlier today. Uh, yeah, Storybook Gamer, you should have enough for that if you want to check it out. Or anybody else in chat. And yeah... Hope you enjoy them. It was a pleasure to see you. Oh, can you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids in Stormvale Castle, tell them I love them. And that, despite my craven heart, I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon enough. I'm finally getting the hang of this whole pain thing, you know? Okay. Yeah, lots to explore. Uh, let's go... Back this way for a sec. Oh shit. Some more thin beast bones. And uh yeah, you can have a horse in Breath of the Wild too, right? Yeah, I think I saw that. I don't know how much of a selling point that is. You could double jump with your horse. I think that's pretty rad. <laughs> totally worth the 80 bucks. You could double jump with a horse. Oh, shit. Okay, let's uh, uh, rest here a while. Can we level up? Yes. Let's go more with uh, vigor. Just for some more survivability. this use bird's eye telescope bird's eye telescopes you can use the bird's eye telescopes found in various areas to get a bird's eye view of the terrain in the direction that the telescope is facing 
Up is zoom in and down is zoom out. Look at that. How cool is that? So yeah, I don't know if you guys heard about my theory of Elden Ring. Uh, but my theory is that the Elden Ring is not an actual physical ring that you wear on your finger. It's the rings around the tree trunk that tell how old a tree is. That's my theory. Because I think they said when the Elden Ring was shattered. Uh, just like the way a, a tree trunk would be shattered, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Oh shit! Who the hell's that? Knight's Cavalry. Should grab that. Grab it. Don't disappear. Oh god! Excuse me. <laughs> go, go, go. No, no, no! Fuck you! Okay, hopefully it'll come back. Smithy stone. Nice, nice, nice. Big bunks. Jeez. Sounds about right. Uh, choose revival location, say, Stake of America, or Last Sight of Grace visited. Let's go with Sight of Grace. Because I think the site or the Stake of America is like further south from the camp there. I'll probably go for another hour or so. Yeah, I gotta wrap it up at three. So I've got some obligations. Okay, hopefully that uh shiny ball has returned. Whatever it's called. Yeah, there it is. Sneak up on it. Oh, crap. Get back here. Don't fall either, you fucking fuck. Ash of War Determination. Okay, let's go back to the side of grace. I think we can level up our weapon too. Oh wait, we need our runes. <laughs> back we go. Yeah, so runes or souls are called runes. Bonfires are called Sights of Grace. Uh, Estus Flask is called Flask of Crimson Tears. So yeah, most likely I still will refer to them as like their original Dark Souls names out of habit.
didn't God of War 2 have a horse we could, like, double jump on as well and we could fly on it? Or use it to fly like a Pegasus? Oh yeah, we need to go back to the blacksmith too. Oh shit, what am I doing? What was that? What oh, was that the the move? Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to call my horse. Oh, uh, we also picked up a new Ash of War, I think. Or something. Determination, that's it. This Ash of War grants an armament the quality affinity and the following skill. Determination. A knightly skill. Hold the flat of the armament to your face and pledge your resolve, powering up your next attack. Usable on all melee armaments. Okay. Hopefully it won't take us as long to beat the uh, Tree Sentinel on this character. Okay, let's strengthen the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. And... Ash of War we do here? With the Ashes of War menu, you can use Ashes of War to grant skills and affinities to your armaments and Sites of Grace. An armament can only have one skill. Any skill it previously had will be lost. By adding an affinity, you can alter an armament's attack affinity, boost attribute scaling, and more. An armament's type determines what skills and affinities it can have. Some special armaments cannot be granted, granted new skills or affinities using Ashes of War. Okay, that. Uh, let's go... Determination? Let's try that. Okay, quality. Reduces the base damage, but increases the scaling. And I'm guessing that'll only improve once we... Uh, reinforce this weapon. So let's, let's go quality. Yeah. Shit. Fuck. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I was in uh, Mike Isbach's stream when he beat this guy a few days ago. On Monday, actually, and that was so hype. So cool to see him do that. Oh, yeah. Did I kick it? Yeah. What kind of tree sentinel chops down trees? They're supposed to be the guardian of the trees. Not the destroyer. What is that move? More than halfway. This is sweet. Let's fucking go! Oh boy. Oh, fuck you.
Oh man, if we do this. Big hits, man. Just avoided that. Oh no. Heal up. Oh. Uh, one more. Jeep. Those those wolves definitely help for uh distraction. We're still good. We're still alive. Distraction wolves. Let's go. Ho ho, man. Come on, you jabroni. No. Oh. Jeez. Yep. Four more? Where is he? Rah! Oh! <laughs> oh, man. That's the closest I've ever got it. Ever. We can do this. We can do this. With luck, skill, determination. What do you guys think? <laughs> Which one of those attributes? Okay, let's try it again. Oh, I killed my horse. Okay, this this one is uh, done. Kill me. That's usually how it goes. It's like one really good run, and then the next like five runs are much worse. We're doing damage on it though. We don't. Let's try the other Ash of War. Let's try the uh, the jellyfish because that I think that's. Poison damage. Uh, what's the word? Perpetual poison damage. Like it, it keeps going. Oh, I didn't read this yet. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell. Used to summon a spirit jellyfish, a floating spirit that illuminates its surroundings. Prone to tears, the jellyfish girl searches for her distant home will bravely spew poison at foes on her summoner's behalf. It seems her name is Aurelia. Uh, Aurelia. I think Jake the Snake Roberts, his real name is Aurelian Smith, I think. Random bit of trivia. We could summon that one more time, too. Sweet. We have enough FP for that. Fuck you.
leave my jellyfish alone. that already oh we've got to be closer there that's right that do it here hmm Where'd he go? Got to figure out how to like avoid that. Okay, no more, no more heals. Yeah, try to get behind it, but. Either behind it is not the right location, or... Big jump! Oh, we avoided that. Horse got hit a little bit. Okay, halfway. Yeah, I can pretty much consistently get it down about halfway. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, but around halfway. That earlier one was lucky, man. And it's it's a new style of boss fight too, because I'm not really used to to horse combat. Try a big hit. Like that. Ah, it's comparable. That's about 50%. I'm going to get my runes back and do some exploring. We'll come back to that boss later. Yeah, so this game has, like, caves that we can explore, too, like dungeons. Which, I guess, are uh, this game's version of Chalice Dungeons. They're optional, but they give us cool rewards. Arteria Leaf. Dark red leaves with thick, swollen veins. Material used for crafting items. Exceedingly rare to find. I found one. It was behind there. Maybe not so rare. We can just farm that site of grace uh, for these. A faint pulse can be felt in the veins. Stirs the blood, providing an enlivening effect. Hmm, so they're alive.
Okay, let's go down here. Tarnished golden sunflower. A large flower that blooms facing the Ur tree. Material used for crafting items found near minor Ur trees. Though wilted and faded, it still retains holy essence. Like a sunflower. Yeah, and, and sunflowers face the sun too, right? So maybe that maybe the Ur tree is this game's version of the sun. Because I don't see any any normal sun, and that seems to be like the source of light. Or the sun is behind it. Yeah, holy shit, look at that. Yeah, because we could see like a ball of light there, but it's behind the tree. Maybe it's inside the tree. Holy shit. And yeah, like I said earlier, maybe the ring isn't a physical ring, but either the trunk of the tree and the the rings in the trunk, or like the circumference of the fucking sun, maybe. We'll see. I can't not stare at that thing. It's like my eyes are drawn to it. Light pinion. Light feather of birds, materially used for crafting items, commonly used for for arrow fleshlings. Okay. So there's a cave on that island just above our heads there. So I was here before on uh, on my other characters, but yeah, this is like one of the three or four dungeons I explored. Giant collapsed tower. Wow. Hello. What do you need? I don't want any trouble. Uh, what you got? Okay, I want to buy the short bow. We need six hundred for that. All done. Well, be on your way then. Do I have any wounds? We have one, so that's two hundred. Okay, we'll come back here. Could I live here? I just got an idea for a new video. Yeah. 
uh, Siri. Can I make? Oh, can't craft because I'm in combat again. Shit. Wait, do we have, like, rolling attacks? Yeah, okay. Slimey slime. 16 runes. Worth it. Worth it. Here we go. With the item crafting menu, you can make various items from materials that you find. You can learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. Let's make fire pots. Three, because that's how many cracked pots we have. And let's put them here. Craftable item prepared using a cracked pot. A cocktail of incendiary materials is sealed inside. Throw at enemies to inflict fire damage. Cool. Yeah, so I think those uh, slimes are really weak to fire. Oh, yeah. Spirit Spring Jumping. Jump while on horseback near a spirit spring to ride its current high into the air. You won't take damage from jumping into a spirit spring while on horseback, even from a great height. X at a spirit spring while on horseback, spirit spring jump. Oh shit, wrong button. I wanted to heal. Glass shard. Glass shard. Glass shard covered in dirt because it sparkles in the light. It might be mistaken for an object of value when seen from afar. It cannot provide light by itself. Essentially worthless. So that implies that if it doesn't produce light, it's worthless. Produce light like the Ur tree? Or the the glowing ball inside of it. Don't die. Don't die. I think these guys come back to life, don't they? Gold pickled foul foot. That looks like death. Not going in there yet. What is that? Skull? Nice. Yeah, and it's awesome because these skulls respawn. Like, not always in the same location that I found, but they just respawn in the world, which is really handy. Okay, we got, uh, this gold-pickled foul foot. Four-toed foot of a fowl, pickled in a golden medicinal solution. P? <laughs> Craftable item. Boosts the amount of runes obtained from defeating enemies for a certain duration. Since old times, the needy would scrape the meat clean even from a fowl's claw. 
yeah, so we can use these to get more more souls, more runes when we're farming. Golden rune. Oh yeah, we should have enough for the bow now. And some arrows too. You again. I don't want any trouble. Short bow. And let's buy uh, all the arrows we can afford. 27. We'll come back for all this stuff later. Okay, let's equip the torch here and the bow here. Small bow made to fire arrows over great distances. Other than its ability to fire off arrows in rapid succession, it is also well suited for use on a horseback. Excuse me. To use a bow, arrows must be also equipped. Arrows must also be equipped. Skill, barrage. Archery skill using a bow held horizontally. Ready the bow, then fire off a rapid succession of shots faster than the eye can see. Gangster style. Uh, is that a cave? I know there's a cave around here somewhere. Close by. That is a cave. Awesome. What is that? Time for cave. Yes, it is. It's a time for cave. It's a cave. Coastal cave. I'm so glad we don't have to fast travel back and forth to a specific site of grace to level up. We can just level up anywhere. That's much more convenient. Bows! Why would it bring it up now? Uh, equip a bow to fire arrows. You can equip up to two types of arrows to choose from uh, at once. When wielding a bow with two hands, hold L1 for precision, precision aiming. Use right stick to adjust your aim. R1, fire arrow type 1. R2, fire arrow type 2. L1, precision aiming. What a weird time to bring up that tutorial, though. Cave moss. Faintly luminescent moss that grows in dark caves. Materially used crafting items. A fundamental ingredient for medicinal boluses. Medicinal boluses. Hey, BK Born, hello. Greatest game of all time, in your opinion. Yeah, you're not wrong. I'm not going to argue with that. It's uh, it's very good, and it's it's certainly up there. Yeah, how you doing, BK? I, uh, I dropped into your stream last night, but I didn't want to stay long again because you're much further than I am, and I didn't want things spoiled. You're only halfway through. Nice. I'm doing good. A little tired, but I'm doing good. Club. Join the club. So, uh, what level are you then, BK? Club. A thick, solid lump of wood. 
Wielding this striking weapon requires no skill, just fucking bash. A simple primitive weapon that requires only brute strength and per persistence to hammer your foe into the ground. Skill, Barbaric Roar, let loose a bestial roar to rally the spirit and increase attack power. While active, strong attacks change to savage combo attacks. Cool. Level 65-ish. Okay, nice, nice. Um, so I... I started a brand new character. Because I tried something foolish. I tried doing two separate first playthroughs at the same time. Like, one for YouTube, one for Twitch. One being a strength faith build, and one being a dexterity intelligence build. And I realized it was too much, and... And I wouldn't be able to give, like, a, an honest first impression or reaction to areas that I had already seen. So yeah, I'm starting from scratch, taking some stuff that I've learned so far. I picked a different class. I picked the uh, Nomadic Warrior, I think, or the Nomad. Because I realized that they start with a 100% block shield, with which is immensely more better. And a Halberd and a Longsword. So yeah, now I'm at the coastal cave, I think. Yeah. So I have been here before. Uh, and yeah, in like the furthest I've made it in any playthrough is uh, I beat Margit and I made it a little bit further inside the castle. Not that much further though. Like two or three bonfires in. Your strength faith built. Nice, nice. Do you find it OP? Or like just right? Land Octopus Ovary. Who's that? Oh shit, I thought that was the head. That club was the head. The bleeds. Didn't expect pack. No, it's a pack. Huh. Just right. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's that's the best kind of build where it's it's just challenging enough. And it's not too easy. I'll probably go for like like a quality build, like a jack of all trades build for this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I don't want more stuff spoiled than I already have because I, I wanted to see how much bigger the map was. Like, I had a feeling that there was more to the map than just, like, the just this. So I, I looked up, and yeah, it's much bigger than this. <laughs> Attack on Katang with a raid, hell yeah. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Attack on Katang. Thank you for the raid. Vanessa Bobessa, hello. An attack... Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. How was your stream attack? Were you streaming... Uh, I almost said Bloodborne. Were you streaming Elden Ring too? I'm loving the game. It's amazing. It's, it is consuming my thoughts. Like, all I've been thinking about for the last week is this game and, like, a bit of guitar. But most, mostly this game. Uh, yeah, I was, just, I was just talking about, like, the map, how it's, it's much bigger than this, so I spoiled myself on that, and I watched a video on how to, uh, get a whole bunch of runes early, and I, I spoiled myself on an area, like, east of here, where the sky turns red, and there's tons of dragons, but other than that, I didn't spoil myself, and I don't want to spoil myself any further. You were streaming Elden Ring, nice, nice. How are you liking it? I'm guessing you're liking it too. Yeah, thank you for the raid again. That's very, very awesome. Okay, we're mid-rolling. Um, okay, let's take off the bow for now. Yeah. Okay, we picked up Land Octopus Ovary something.
Uh, yes. Blind as much as it can be. Like, like I was saying earlier, just, just before you rated, actually, uh, I tried something stupid. I tried earlier two separate first playthroughs. Uh, one streaming on Twitch and another recorded specifically for YouTube. Separate builds. But in my uh, stupidity and my eagerness and my ambition was too high, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I realized I couldn't offer like an honest first reaction to, uh, to locations and, and encounters in the game. So I scrapped those. I'm starting from scratch. There's a new character. And uh, taking some stuff that I've learned from my pre previous characters and applying that here. Yeah, and I didn't make it far either. I made it just a piss a bit past uh Margaret. Margaret. Yes. Status menu. With the status menu, you can check your level attributes, base stats, and more. The information shown here also reflects changes to your attack, defense, and re resistances bestowed by armaments and armor that you have equipped. Okay, we got uh yeah, the, the land shark ovary? Or land octopus ovary? Puffy, milky, white ovary of a land octopus. Materially used for crafting items. Land octopuses eat humans in order to bear young. And theirs is the blood that runs through the, these ovaries. So their, their desire to reproduce or to have offspring overwrites the need to keep humans alive. And yeah, if, if you guys can't tell, I'm a sucker for lore and story and just reading everything. So yeah, this is a... This is a... A, a, sl a s slow run. Not a speed run. This is a chill run. This is read everything. Oh yeah, I remember this cave. I remember this cave. Demi human chief. Nope. So I realized, yeah, there's two of these guys. But, if we stick to one side of the uh, cave, the other won't come near us. Uh oh, and we can kind of control the fight that way. Shit. Heal up. Two Estus left. Yup. Fuck. Okay, Jellyfish is dead. I think every time we hit the big boy, he staggers a bit too, which is really good. Oh, yeah, we're dead. <laughs> so, uh, what starting class did you guys choose? And how are you liking it? Yeah, I chose, uh, for this playthrough, it's, uh, uh, Vagabond, I think. But for my first two, I chose a hero for my strength faith build and astrologer or astronomer for uh, my dex int build. But I like I like the the uh, vagabond better. Oh wait, we can just roll here.
Yeah, that spinning move can uh, stagger us, stun lock us. I don't want that. Cut him up. I think my halberd has a bit longer range, so maybe we should try that. If we happen to die here, which I think... Yeah! <laughs> okay, let's try the halberd. I think it's, it's the same uh, reinforcement as the sword here. And I, th I think the damage is, co is comparable, too. Yeah, I got to wrap up the stream in, a, in about half an hour, though, my friends. I got stuff to do. But yeah, we'll go for another half hour. Okay, so that's 154 damage, and the halberd is 156. Okay, so this is two better. Let's check the reach. Okay, so it's like it touches the edge of that circle coming from the Sight of Grace. And that's uh, hard to see with that. Okay, let's go with the Halberd. Let's just try it. Uh, this needs an Ash of War too. I hope it doesn't cost runes. Quality? Oh, we can only have one. I see how it works. Okay. Um. So the the scaling changes no matter which one we choose from D to C. And the Damage looks the same too. Let's try. Let's try determination. Yeah, remove these ashes of war from Lord Sword's Lord Sworn's quality greatsword and apply them to quality halberd. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so with quality, it's less base damage but higher scaling. Yeah, because the scaling goes up to C. So that's one forty-four. And quality or standard is 156. Let's go. I can change it later on, right? Like I can I can change it from standard to quality. I hope. So let's go standard for now. Because it's got more damage. Okay, let's try it again. does seem like it does more damage. And it staggers him with every hit, which is really good. Yeah, we're doing more damage already. Oh, oh man. How many moves do we have here? 300. That's not a lot. <laughs> I like the halberd though. It's like it's like five orange steins and snow, a faster snow. And then there's another snow after this snow, so two snow. Ten orange stein, uh, two snow. 
and a partridge in a pear tree. I think the best bet would be taking out the small guys first while avoiding big boy. Good. That reached. I'm getting hits on big boy while we can or as we can, but not a priority. Shit. Where's he? There's only three of the small boys. That's a killer. Fuck. Yeah, and they hang back. They hang back too. Okay, all the all the the small guys are dead. For here. Now it's just a matter of like maintaining stamina, so we can dodge and block and hit. Let's go. I'm glad that it doesn't seem like there's a, a stagger animation for when, when we miss with the halberd. Unlike Dark Souls. Two more. Yeah, yeah. Halfway there. Let's go. One Estus left. I wonder... I have an idea. Ah. Oh. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Staggeroni. Oh, they're coming too. <laughs> Where's it? Where's it? Rob! Fuck! Okay, I can still fast roll though. That's good. That's good. How many are there? Four? Three? One here. Three. How did that not kill that guy? What? Shit. Health, health, health. Last one. Hell yeah. Okay, here we go. Too far away. Don't get greedy, though. 
It's all downhill now. He's got bleed. Let's go. Shit. Nope. Oh man, I'm glad that staggered him. Two more hits. One more hit. Let's go. Yeah! Holy shit. That's what it's about. GG. Tailoring tools. That was fun. Soy needle? So we have... What, what can we do with these? Can we, like, change the color of our armor? Soy needle. A large soy needle curved like a fang. Bok, the demi-human's prized possession. Bok, bok. And tailoring tools. A portable set of tailoring tools enables armor alterations at sites of grace. Yeah, what, what kind of alterations? Uh, 1,500 runes, too. Is that enough to level up? Just barely. Good. Man, that was a good fight. Yeah, let's see what's over here. Did we get any back? No. Oh, hello. Don't die here. Oh, shit. I can't see how far away you are. Smoldering butterfly? Praise the tree. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Praise the gorgeous view. Therefore, visions of Erd tree. I'm I'm almost certain that that's like the sun or or the source of light. Yeah, I can't wait to see how my theory plays out. Yeah, let's go with Halberd. Halberd is better than uh, Lord Sworn's great sword. Uh, if I recall correctly, there were just two or three items here we have to get. <laughs> Penguins and uh, pigeons. Four toed foul foot. The flight's pinion. Okay, four toed foul foot. A four toed foul's foot. Material used for crafting items in the lands between having three digits is seen as a bad omen. 
As such, the four-toed fowl's foot is a gift of great luck indeed. Hmm. So if we use this, does that increase our item discovery? That's what I'm thinking. Hey, set of grace. Awesome. <laughs> oh, look, a bunny. A glowing skull. Okay, we should have enough to level up now. Yeah, because we had enough earlier. Yeah. Let's keep going until Vigor reaches 20. Church of Dragon Communion. It's like uh, Visions of Archdragon Peak from Dark Souls 3. Slightly. Can we do anything with that altar? Ritual of Dragon Communion. Oh, what? Offerings. Dragon Heart, Dragon Fire, Dragon Claw, Dragon Maw. Channels Dragon to spew Flame Breath. Can we wield that? Channels Dragon to rend foes with Dragon Claws. Channels Dragon to bite foes before caster. That's badass. Uh, 15 Faith, 12 Arcane. 17 Faith, 13 Arcane. 24 Faith, 16 Arcane. That's cool. So yeah, we need a Dragon Heart to offer to get one of these. Okay. We'll come back. I think there's some loot down here, too. Yeah, because I was here earlier uh, on another character, like I said. But that option to uh, to trade the dragon heart for, for dragon power wasn't there. I don't know what I was missing. I guess we go down there. I hear uh, sparklies. Is that the sparkly making that sound? Oh, this thing. Somber smithing stone. Cool. Shard of smithing stone drained of color. Strengthens special armaments to plus one. Special armaments with unique characteristics cannot be strengthened with colored smithing stones. Number of steps and amount strengthened different from standard equipment. Okay, so it's like Twinkling Titanite, I think, where it, yeah, just reinforces more unique or boss weapons, maybe. Smithy Stone rank two, nice. Uh, 
Uh, stone used to smith a variety of armaments. A large shard found in plenty. Strengthen armaments up to plus six. Nice. Smithing stones is found... Smithing stone is found throughout the lands between, and its mining galleries built to excavate it can be found everywhere. Yes. Oh no! Oh shit! <laughs> Goodbye, Scully. <laughs> Say hi to Mulder when you get there. Fuck. Just yeeted off the cliff, man. That's the first time I've ever used the word yeet. <laughs> Feels good, man. <laughs> Alright, well I think... It's about time I need to wrap up the stream. Let's go back to the first step. Yeah. Uh, so I want to be back later tonight. Stream some more of this. Probably around 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that's in like 7 hours from now, roughly. Oh uh, yeah, thank you to everybody for hanging out today. Jeff Coran. Storybook Gamer. Uh, BK Born Gaming. And thank you to... Attack on Katang for the kick-ass raid. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you can catch this on my YouTube in a few days' time. YouTube.com slash Tim Cleaver. Uh, yeah, if you're watching the content and you enjoy it and you haven't followed yet, don't forget to follow. That'd be much appreciated as well. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.